The last thing I want to address on the chord change, of course, is the five chord. Let's take it as a bigger picture, the five, four, one. Now, in British blues, you don't hear too much going on on the actual five chord, except for this one little thing I'll show you in a second. Now, on the five chord, we can do two things. We can use major pentatonic or minor pentatonic, or the composite blues scale. We can actually use everything we've talked about previously. Uh, and that's kind of what those guys will do. What they don't so much do is on a five chord, in this case, it's E7 or E9, E7, E, G sharp, B, and D. Very rarely, uh, you may, of course, you're going to come across it here and there, but for the most part, they don't really sound the third of the five chord, which would be G sharp. It's just not really part of the style. Uh, I'm sure they know about it, but it's not something they do too much. All right, so the big thing, and I learned this from Eric Clapton, was you want to hit the five chord. You want to just address the five chord on the last beat of the turnaround. So for instance, if I have my E, you know, five, four, that. So basically, all you really want to do is when that five chord comes around is hit an E, right? So like if it's, you know, right, just hitting that E. I can think about minor pentatonic or major pentatonic, but check out this lick. And that's that mixture of the major and minor pentatonic. I have the, the C natural to the C sharp to the E. Then I can do that little lick again and put that on the five chord. And if you think about, for me, uh, uh, Crossroads kind of comes out with that, you know, that kind of a lick that he does at the end. Uh, Sleepy Time Time, which is from Cream, it's a great tune. Um, and every turn around that, on that tune, you know, he's in C, then like, you know. So every time he always does like, that kind of phrase. So that little maneuver will get you that British blue sound right away. So let's check it out over a track using a 5-4-1 chord regression, E, D to A. All right, so you notice I played the E, the root of it, low, or I could play it high. Doesn't really matter, right? As long as I'm hitting an E. And here's a low one. And here. Then like, then. Right, if you just think about where that five chord comes in. So the way to practice this is to beat it up right? Take a track like this or a full 12 bar blues and every single time that turnaround comes around, play one of those licks. Find them on different spots of the neck. You're just looking for an E, right? So you want to have to, it has to be timed just right or else it won't really work. So like I said, overdo it. Make sure you do it every single time and then it becomes second nature. And then when you hear it in the blues, when you want to pull it out, it's underneath your fingers. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it every time on a blues in a real situation because it becomes a little predictable. But if you do it, you know, a number of the times, it really, for the listener and for me, it's like, oh, wow, that guy knows where he's at. That person knows what chord they're on. And it's a nice sound. It really takes you out of just the regular pentatonic feel.